Okay, so now we're going to work on creating the animation states for our player, right? We've got walk, we've got dead, we've got idle, and we've got jump. And we want to incorporate these in the game so that when we move side to side, he jumps into this animation. When he gets hit by an enemy, he jumps into this animation. When he's just standing there, he's just kind of bobbing up and down. And when he jumps in the air, he does this. So let's create those states. The first thing we want to do is get our idle states. And I'm just going to grab these two here. And three, actually. And I'm going to drag those up onto the stage. And it automatically starts off by saying, all right, you're trying to create an animation here, clearly. And I am. And I'm going to call it player underscore idle and save that and you'll notice that creates two things it creates this little controller with the little you know connect the dots looking icon and then this play button icon which is the animation so the animator if i go up here to the animator tab this is my animator where i can control transitions between animations and when animations are going to happen and so forth that's the animation controller or the animator. And if you don't have that window, you can just go to window, animator, uh, right? And then animation as well. Animation, this is the actual clip. So if I click on this, it shows me the three frames that I just pulled in uh, to make that idle animation. All right, so that's the difference there. And this controller we're going to be using quite a bit to set up all the player states. So I'm going to click on it again and just name it player okay player and I don't know if you've done this yet but I did a little bit of organization so if I look at my assets folder here I've got an animations folder okay this animation folder has two subfolder player animations and enemy animations there's nothing in there yet but there will be shortly in the same way with game sprites, I've created an enemy sprites, miscellaneous sprites, and player sprites, just to keep my, my files organized. And now inside my player sprites, I've got this player animator, and I've got this idle state. So let's make our state for, we don't need this guy anymore. We just used him to make the files, so let's delete him. And let's get our running state and pull that up here. And this is going to be... Uh, player underscore run and I'm going to save that and notice that comes with its own controller I don't want that controller I'm going to use this one that I already renamed player so let's get rid of that one get rid of him and I want my dead state so we'll pull those guys up player underscore dead and again, we'll get rid of the controller and we'll get rid of the guy. And then I just need my jump. Now, the problem with the jump in my situation, and this might be the case for you for idle, is that it's only one frame. And so I need to make an animation clip of that, but it's not going to happen if I just drag him up here. So I'm going to right click on this and go create animation. And it automatically creates a new animation here and I'm just going to type in player underscore jump and there it is so we got all of our stuff now I'm going to highlight these files all my animation files and I'm going to drag them into the player animation folder so that they're not cluttering up my uh, player sprites keeping everything organized all right, so player animations, here we go. I'm going to click on my controller here and take, take a look at, see what I'm looking at here. And I've just got this player idle here. Well, that's not too impressive. Uh, let me bring this over here to this side panel so we can kind of look at our game and look at the animation at the same time. Uh, let's take this player animator and let's drag it up to our player object. Boom. So now this animator 
uh, and anything we do with it is going to be attached to our player object. And you can see right now, if I launch the game, because his default state is idle, he's just kind of, you know, shaking around there. That's a little too fast for my uh, liking, you know. He's really just kind of doing the knee bends there. It's like a, it's like a bad Olivia Newton-John 80s video or something. So let me just stop that there. And let's go to that animation clip. See, this is the idle animation. If I click on my player idle, and then I open up the animation tab, these are those three frames that are running there. And it's running at 12 frames per second. So let me just knock that right down to how about three frames per second? Uh, there we go. Let's let's try that now. Let's go back to our scene and play this. And now it's you know that's a little more manageable, right? Okay, so that that works. Now we want to get him to transition between these different states. So we've seen what idle is doing, but we got to get these other states into the game here. So let's pull player run up and player jump. And let's get player dead in here. So all these different animation clips that we might want to access within our game, we're just going to drag them all up into this space. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set changing from idle to run, right? So I want to transition from this default state, which is why this is orange. It's the default state to player run, you know, and I want to do that when I'm, hitting the right or left arrow. So let me just right click on this and choose make transition. And then you'll notice I have this little arrow that's kind of dragging out. I'm going to pop it. See how it snaps onto that player run? Boom. Knock that in. And then I'm going to make a transition back from player run to player idle. Because I want to be able to, when I've stopped moving my left or right arrows, I don't want to keep keep running while I'm standing still. So I need a transition to the run animation and a transition back to the idle animation. Now you'll notice here we've got an inspector that has some information and it's talking about an exit time. You'll notice there's a little transition here between the animations. That might work better for 3D, but for 2D we really don't want any time where we hit a button and we're still doing the old animation. So I'm going to turn this exit time off and the fixed duration off and put the transition duration to zero. And I'm going to do that for both the transitions. And I also noticed this thing down here that says conditions list is empty. There's no condition. So we need a condition to set so that when this condition is met, then I move and I transition from player idle to player run. So in order to do that, we have to have some parameters. So we're going to go over here to this little button, this little plus button here under parameters, and we're going to create a float called speed. And just creating that parameter does nothing. We have to set it up as a transition here and give it some value. So if, let's see, this condition is, is just like in the code where it's if, right? So if what? So let's add a condition. If speed, see how my parameter comes up now automatically? If speed is greater than, and we're going to say uh, 0 0.01. So if speed is greater than 0 0.01, we want to transition from idle to run. And then the transition back, let's add if speed is less than uh, 0 0.01, then we want to go back to the idle state. You know, if my speed is less than 0 0.01, then I must not be moving. Well, what are we going to connect this speed thing to? Well, let's, let's connect it to the feedback from horizontal because we're already getting a float there, right? We're getting a, a decimal number that ultimately becomes a whole number if we hold the button long enough but we're either getting a one or a negative one when we hit the right or left arrow on horizontal. So let's see, what, what do I have to do to get this to work? 
Well, the first thing we need to do is in my player script, I want to add this line here right underneath my rigid body because I need to create a public animator called my animator, which is going to connect my ability to write code to accessing these transitions in the player uh, animator. So let's create this public animator, my animator. And then you'll notice down here in my void start, I've added my animator equals get component animator. So we're tapping into that animator component in our inspector. And what we want to do is where we are running, right? Where we're handling our horizontal movement in this handle movement function. We want to create a line of code, which essentially uh, sets that speed float, right? And what we're doing is we're saying my animator dot set float. So we want to set one of the floats that we have in this animator component. And which which float are we going to set? Well, here's speed, right? That was the that was the one that we set up here in our parameters. We got speed, and we're going to turn it into a math f absolute horizontal. So if we have a float and we know that it might be positive or negative, but we always want it to be positive, then we can use this absolute value. And we're feeding horizontal in as the argument. And you remember horizontal either gives us a one or a negative one. So now it will always just give us a one, no matter whether we're pressing the right arrow or the left arrow. So let's save that. And let's cross our fingers here and see if that, that works. So here's my guy. He's in idle, right? And I use my arrow keys. And look, see, he's, he's jumping into his run state. And you can see the transitions are working for that particular state. So great. We're off to a good start. Uh, now we want to make him jump. So we're going to make a transition from idle to jump, and we're going to make a transition from run to jump. And we don't ever really want to go back from jump to run. We certainly wouldn't be running in midair. I don't know, maybe some of you guys would, but uh, we could probably just go back to idle once he hits the ground. We want to jump back into the idle state. So let's make a transition from jump back to idle. Now, we don't have a parameter for any of these transitions, so let's create one. We're going to go into the here and say parameters plus bool, and we're going to make a new bool called jumping. And if I'm running and I want to transition to jumping, first of all, let's get rid of these things again, our transition times. If I want to transition from run to jump, I'm going to hit uh if jumping is true and then from idle to jump again remove these transition times and i want the same thing jumping is true if i'm moving from idle to jump now if i'm moving back from jump to idle then i want to uh to say that jumping is what false okay now none of that's going to work because once again we have to well, there's a code component to this so let's go into our code document and where do we handle our jumping we handle it here and handle input so right in here i've taken out my debug log i'm jumping and replaced it with my animator dot set bool this time, right? We're not setting a float. We created a bool. What's the bool's name? Jumping. What do we want to set it to? True. So we've got now we'll start jumping. Now let's take a look and see whether that, that worked or not. Let's hit play for our game. And we're running back and forth. And now we're jumping and we're never doing anything else oh god we're stuck in the player jump animation state so in order to get back to idle we need this uh this jumping bool to be false somewhere right we got to reset that so where can we do that well 
we can do it in another function. So I've created this other function here. It says void on collision enter 2D, collision 2D target. So basically, when we have a collision with another box collider, okay, we're checking to see uh, what target we're, we're looking for. And in this case, we can say if the target game objects tag is the same as ground, then my animator set bool jumping to false. So what we need is we need a target game object that has a tag of ground. Because if this registers as true, then we'll be setting that jumping to false and we'll transition back to the idle state. So I just need to find a game object that I can give the tag ground. And obviously, that would be my platform. So let me go back out here and click on my platform. And if you look up here uh, in my inspector, there's a thing that says tag underneath here. And I'm going to add a tag. And the list is empty, so I'm going to add one to the list. And I'm going to name it ground and save it. And now when I drop this down where it says untagged, I should be able to find it. And there it is, ground. And so now that tag, right, we're going to experience a collision here. We're checking for a collision with something that is labeled ground. And then we're going to reset our animator. Let's see if it worked. We'll play. I'm running back and forth. I'm jumping. And then... Ah, yes, we're back to our player idle and running and here, jumping, and then I'm back. Perfect. We'll handle the dead state after we create some enemies.